sailing down the river from Liverpool. Heave away, Sandiano. Oh, the sails were her sets and the hatches full. All across the place of the What's up for the morning, Andy? Morning, up. Morning swim. My body and mind is saying, nah, it's not worth it. You gotta get in and you gotta breathe. Deep breath. Don't panic. Just get in and breathe. Just lay there and just enjoy. Be one with the cold, Kiro. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Cannonball! Go, 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 go! Go, Gaza. Go, 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 I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, f that. Well, she went really far from the boat. That <laughs> hurts. Got some shampoo. No. If you're wondering what these folks are doing in the Arctic, let me share the tale of how two sailing crews came together for an Arctic expedition on top of the world in a land called Svalbard. This frozen archipelago lying at almost 80 degrees north is just 600 miles from the North Pole. It's home to some of the northernmost settlements in the world ancient glaciers that crash into the Arctic Ocean. <laughs> and some of Earth's most spectacular creatures. It would be a first for both crews to venture into the Arctic Circle. But the sea seems to bring people together in the most beautiful ways. My name's Andy. I grew up in Reading, Pennsylvania, um, far from the sea, but I uh, grew up sailing on Chesapeake with my parents since literally since I was in diapers. And I'm from Sweden. I live in Bristol in the UK currently. In Flagstaff, Arizona, like the wild west of the USA. From Florida. From the north part of Sweden, Kiruna. California, in San Francisco area. Bulgarian born, but raised in South Africa. I went to the Bahamas when I was nine with my family. When my sister was there, we had two cats, my parents, and we lived on a 36-foot catch uh, for the winter in the Bahamas, and we're homeschooled. They're some of the first true memories I have as a human, and I, you know, it's the reason I'm sitting here right now, that trip, like 100%. And I went to New Zealand on a backpacking trip, and uh, that's where I met Andy. And he and uh, two, two of his friends had rented a sailboat uh, for, th for five days and me and my friend uh, tagged along. When I first met her on the bus, like that was it. That was the end of the line for me. She was it and that was it. It took her a little more time to convince. And since 2015, this is our, so this is our fourth full season uh, doing trips on the boat with uh, taking people offshore. It's sharing the wisdom of the high seas with those wise enough to seek it out. And that's, that's it in a nutshell. The mission of what we're doing is trying to get people to experience what it's like sailing across an ocean self-sufficiently. So we met Andy and Mia in Stockholm just about two years ago and just felt like a kindred spirit when we were sailing across the South Atlantic this season. Uh, Andy sent an email, an email through and he said, hey, I, I don't know if you guys would ever be interested in this, but uh, our boat Isbjorn will be in Svalbard next summer. And is there any potential interest of you or anybody else from the Delos crew to come up and do a little Arctic adventure. They had this opportunity for us to come sailing and they asked and we said, heck yeah, 
we wanted to bring Delos to the Arctic because we've admired you guys' work for a long time and there's not a lot of other people in our age that are making a living in sailing exclusively. I first heard about Delos from a friend of mine that sent me one of their videos and I watched like two minutes of the first video and saw that they were basically uh, traveling, living on the ocean, diving and filming it all. The, the Delos Project, I love that we're calling it the Delos Project. It's really cool and that name in itself has a uh, bigger meaning than just uh, the SV Delos YouTube channel. We've met so many incredible people over the years that have become part of our project that it's turned into this kind of community of people that we call our Delos tribe and it spans the entire globe. Everyone has a similar sort of mindset that they'd like to live more with nature, do something a bit different, leave less of a footprint on the earth. That was a funny thing. So how, how did I meet Delos? <laughs> on YouTube. Yeah, it's, it kind of just happened organically. And yeah, then here we are now, together in the Arctic. <laughs> Delos has always kept kind of at the equator and stuff. So it's, it's going to be very, very interesting to see kind of how it is being on a boat in this weather. So the big picture plan with you guys is meet in, in, uh, meet in Long Yerbian, and then I haven't mapped out the exact route just yet, but the plan is to sail around Spitsbergen. So that's the big island here. Um, it's something like 800 miles. The difference is if you fall in the water in the tropics, you can survive for a day, two days, three days, longer, and you might be able to swim somewhere. Here, I know it's not long, and uh, that's, that's a very scary thing to fall off the boat in, in, in this kind of water. Not a lot of people have done it ever, and it's only recently possible because over here on the east side of Spitsbergen, typically it's, it's iced in year round. You can't get through these passages and there's too much of a pack ice danger. But uh, obviously with climate change, that's been changing over the last 10 or 15 years. Svalbard is the extreme of everything. You know, you, you can't, I mean, I'm sitting here without gloves on and I'm regretting I don't have gloves. Like, it's just so much harder to do everything. I mean, sailing is sailing. You still got to sail the boat. You still got to take care of it. But the consequences are that much higher. Have you guys yeah, ever so, uh, done any sailing like this before? Like cold water like this? Okay. Uh, no, 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 nothing like this. I mean, we've been up in Newfoundland and, and um, Scotland was, I mean, Scotland in the summertime was still 10, 10, 12 degrees. It was chilly, but it's nothing, you know, no ice, nothing like this. So this is another level altogether. Mia was doing some research the other day, um, and, and the average air temperature in July when we're there is five degrees Celsius. The average water temperature is two degrees Celsius. So it's gonna be chilly, Willie. Yeah, when we first heard about Svalbard, I didn't even know where it was, and it took me a while to even like remember the name and learn how to say it. Have you ever heard of this place? No. Never. Have you heard of Svalbard? Svalbard? No. No? Yeah, have you heard of it before? No? Svalbard. Yeah. What, what is it? It's way, 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 way north in Norway. Cold. Very cold. I didn't realize it was that far north in Norway. You know what? You know it's, it's crazy. When we first uh, heard about this trip to Svalbard, I went to the, our charts on Delos and tried to scroll up. And you couldn't even get to Svalbard. Like, I didn't know where it was. I Googled it and was like, okay, it's there. Then I tried to look at the charts and it's like cut off at the top of Norway. And that just like blew my mind. The fact that you're literally going somewhere that's off of the charts that we had on the boat. Yeah, I'm thinking it's been about a year of 
thinking and planning and now we're here. Is it starting to seem real now, Brian? I was just going to say, for me, starting like, to feel now real. it's kind of starting to feel real, but it's still not. <laughs> it felt real the second I put pants on. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to Scandinavian Airlines and Star Alliance flight 4496 to Svalbard. Oh, it's pretty cold, huh? <laughs> A little bit of turbulence, huh? I think we just fell about two meters straight down. Yeah, we're going to first look at the welcome to Longyearbyen or Svalbard. It's just kind of one of those very real moments where you're like, oh, shit, we're in the Arctic now. Welcome to Svalbard. You know, it's uh, the middle of the Northern Hemisphere summer now, and I'm looking out at this mountain and it's capped with snow and ice. You know, 60% of this place is Glaciers. That was one of the scariest landings I think I've had. Looking down over white caps, going like 45 knots. The plane just drops like five meters. Wait a minute, hang on. That's the time right now. <laughs> the crazy thing was like for me was like coming in. It just looked like, I don't know, 5 o'clock in the afternoon and it was peaceful up there and then we just started descending into this like grey cloud and then like I have no idea what's going to pop out on the other side and then, and then you see that. Can you tell me where the name Long Yerbin comes from? No. <laughs> <laughs> Formerly known as Longyear, this settlement was born from the coal mining industry. An American by the name of John Munro Longyear first established mining operations here in 1906. Today, coal mining has been replaced by research stations and more recently tourism. With a population of polar bears outnumbering residents, it's fair to say the high arctic wilderness lives right on the locals' doorstep. There is no doubt that Longyearbyen is the gateway to adventure in the arctic. Where are we going, chaps? We're going to meet Andy and Mia today. We're we going to see the boat for the first time. Yeah, we're going to go see Eastbjorn. The boat we're going to be living on for the next three weeks. See our little space. Yeah. Ahoy, Eastbjorn! Ahoy, ahoy! Hey! hey. hey. Good. Good to see you. Man. Welcome to the Arctic, guys. Yeah, thank you. Guys? <laughs> Welcome. Hello! Greetings. Hey. How are you? Nice to meet you. Yeah, I love you. All right, so we've been invited on board. We're gonna take our first look down below on Eastbjorn. We'll be living for the next three weeks. Give me that Eastbjorn beer. That's perfect. There's one. So I'll take Carol's. <laughs> How cool is it that we have a beer that's the same name as the boat? I mean, geez. Uh, Eastbjorn. Eastbjorn is how you pronounce it. Uh, it's Swedish for polar bear, by the way, ice bear. But she's a 1972 Swan 48. Uh, they were built in Finland as ocean racing boats back in the day. So it was made to sail fast across oceans with a lot of people. So she's got eight sea bunks, for example. Mia and I don't even have a double bunk on the boat. We sleep in separate beds back aft. But offshore, for what we do, it works great because everybody has their own little spot with a lee cloth. And that works really well for the kind of business that we run with having individuals that come sailing with us to go offshore. She's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, it smells like a boat, man. Yeah, that's so nice. Hopefully not, Listen, no, hopefully it's good. not too no. bad like a boat. It's a very, no, like it's a good, very that's good. A good thing. She's 36,000 pounds displacement, draws eight feet in the keel. Um, she's got long overhangs, so she's 48 feet on deck, 37 feet on the waterline. So it makes her look real pretty, and she's designed to heal. So you guys will quickly find out that 
upwind, she sails at 30 degrees, and that's just what you get. It's, uh, it's like walking on another planet down below, but... It's taking me about 15 minutes just to put on my pants. <laughs> we did a huge refit last winter, so we put in a new engine, all new tanks, a diesel heater for this trip this summer. We had to get the uh, eight survival suits and just much more equipment for the boat. And having Delos coming along, with all the camera equipment and stuff was a little bit we were a little bit nervous about that beforehand but we also knew that you guys are used to being on a boat i think it's gonna be a sweet boat it's gonna be perfect so ride it's sweet. gonna be nice and cozy <laughs> it's gonna be awesome yeah it looks good Look, lots of room yeah, yeah. lots of room and cool crew, <laughs> cool crew. Yeah. hey everyone brady and blue here you may have noticed there are no youtube ads on this video and there won't be any ads for the rest of this episode Yep, so if you like what you see so far, head on over to 80northseries.com. There you can support our Pay What's Fair model and also watch episode two, three, and four of our Svalbard series. Yeah, your support really is crucial for independent filmmakers like us, so everything is appreciated. Hope you enjoy the rest of episode one. Yee <laughs> All right, so we've been put in charge of guns and booze. <laughs> Senior Brady is a good friend of mine. He's pushed me to, to step out of my comfort zone and to do these things, um, to go sailing in the first place, to come to the Arctic, someone to joke around with and uh, just talk, talk nonsense, I guess. <laughs> Check out this entrance to the store, man. There's a polar bear on top. Brady is a very unique human being. You know, in the year and a half almost that we've spent together, almost every waking and sleeping moment, um, I don't think I've ever heard him say anything bad about anyone else. Brady is my brother. Uh, he's my best friend. And uh, for me, it's, it's really very special to you know, be able to share so much time of my life with somebody who's not only like my family, but also uh, my friend. And, and we share so many of the same interests together, it's ridiculous. Some people might say, you know, how can you live with your sibling in such close quarters for so long? Like, you guys must argue like crazy. But I think, you know, the, the biggest thing we get into is like, hey man, like, give me the camera, like you're using the camera too much. Whoa! Why do you think they put us in charge of guns? I don't know, man. Maybe they have a funny idea of who we are. <laughs> guns and booze. Right? Yes. No, they've got a pretty, they've got it pretty figured out. Their arrangement of how the trips work and how everything goes. So, yeah. so here's the shopping list for the, for the trip, and it's gonna be a lot of food. Yeah. This is gonna be probably one of the longest trips we're gonna do. Yeah. So we're shopping for 18 days. 18 days, for eight, eight people. Eight people. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, because snacks. Because there's no, once we get out, there's no provisions. No, nothing at all. So the, the total was 6,054 Norwegian actually, crowns, about a little over 600 US dollars. Yeah, that was actually less than I expected. It was a lot less than I expected. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like a crazy. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think the, the prices here are quite low because no tax and I wonder if it's subsidized somehow. Yes, the milk is subsidized. The milk is subsidized, yeah. so some things yes, are subsidized yeah. by the government. Yeah. And One of the things that we have to do in order to take the boat out of Long Yerbin is we need to rent a rifle for protection against polar bears and hopefully it'll never get to the point where we need to use it but we're going to take it because that's what the law says. So whenever you're in town you have to take the bolts out and you do that by flipping this part here and make sure this part here it can turn. Okay. So uh, when you put the bolt back you have to make sure it's in the right position before you can do that. Like that. And now it's in. Okay. Now I want you to try before okay. you go. 
So the thing I have to do, and just hold it up like this. So to get this out, there we go. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Like that. And then we can. That was probably the easiest process to get a gun, right? Yeah. Brian is. Uh... He's the love of my life. He's my best friend and a person that I can always go to and, and a person that I really admire. He's the one I, I've always looked up to him and always have got inspiration from him from kind of all aspects of life. And every obstacle that comes up, it's just like, oh, we'll just make it work. <laughs> just a couple of hunter gatherers in your modern day. <laughs> Got our fishing pole on our rifle. Let's go sailing. <laughs> something I really respect him for is how calm he is in otherwise quite hectic situations. Like I would probably not be able to handle something as calmly as he does. When we applied for the permit with the government. I had to get a police report from the Orlando PD. Yep. Which came back good. No arrest records. No arrests. Send Give that into the Sisselman. He sends you back a permit. You want to talk to these guys, and they're like, alright. Yeah, there is some. Um... And it's a long way back around. Yeah, <laughs> it's a very long way. And, this is, and there's stuff we want to see in here for sure, yeah. so I think we'll. Yeah. I think Marina said that this is a beautiful area to sail. Yeah. I don't think I've ever been this excited about an adventure like this before. We're about to do something. I never thought I'd do, I never thought I'd be in the Arctic, never thought I'd be sailing in cold weather. I love the warm weather so much. And the way these things have fallen together is incredible. Everyone's here at um, our little house right on the water and the whole crew's awesome. So the energy level's high, everybody's hanging out, everyone's looking at maps on their phones, maps spread out on the table. We've got locals over talking about what to do, what to see, what to watch out for how to interact with the animals. It's like the beginning of, I don't know, some kind of expedition that we have no idea what we're getting ourselves into. And it's a really, really good feeling. Svalbard intrigued me because of, I guess, the wilderness of this place. And of course, like all the animal life here and everything that I have not seen. I mean, it's so many species that I wanted to see, but have not seen yet. And you have this uh, pimp right here. You yeah, that's where yeah, the walrus are, right? Walrus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you won't get as close to them as you did the other day, James. Yeah. I've got a dry seat and a set of things. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so James is the ship's photographer, as we like to call him officially, and I, f I forget how it started, but we invited James to come to Scotland with us last year, knowing we were coming to the Arctic this year, and said, hey James, come to Scotland, do a, tre a test trip as the ship's photographer, and like, after the first day, we're like, okay, James, you're, you're coming to the Arctic with us one way or another. Well earned. Yeah, bro. Well earned. You know, when I first got in touch with you guys, the goal was to sail around Spitsbergen. And having gotten here now, I am more excited just to see what's around the corner. Like, I don't care if we get around Spitsbergen just to say we did it. I want to go and see what's down that fjord. I want to see what it's like to sail up to the head of that glacier. And I think that's what it really was like, okay, it's gonna be a good trip because that's all we all want to do is just go around the corner and see what's next. Not have a schedule, not have a notch on our belt to cover. None of that is important to any of us. And the fact that we're all on the same page with that is what's gonna make it really good. The day has come and you know it's time to set off and the conditions are perfect uh, first of all guys before before we go i want to officially welcome you to east bjorn this is super awesome that you guys are here i want you to feel like you guys are going to be crew on the boat and and this is your home for the next couple weeks so don't feel like you're guests because i'm not going to take care of you like guests <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so uh, make yourselves at home, and I'm gonna. It's gonna be a big relief to have real sailors on the boat to to help with the sailing stuff. So um, yeah, let's go have some are. fun. Uh, Brian, you want to be dock line? Sure. Cool. If you want to go on the dock, that would be sweet. I 
can't imagine six months ago being in this position. Like all of us are here and we're ready to set off north into the Arctic away from the dock. And the day couldn't be better. Like it's blue skies, the total opposite of what I thought the Arctic would be. But it's the perfect day to leave, so we're going for it. So we are, well, we are officially furthest north that Eastbjorn's ever been. We are 78 degrees, 36 minutes north and uh, 16 degrees, 25 minutes east. So we're getting up there. We're going to crack 80 before this trip's over, I hope. From my point of view, the, the biggest risks uh, would be the weather here. It is the summer, but it, we're still in the Arctic and things change really fast. Well, in the past, we've been able to jump off the boat at our leisure. I think up here, that's probably not a good idea because the water is well, around one degree, something like that. So if you fall off, it's actually a very, very, very scary deal. You have to think in advance, but then you also have to think in advance a little bit more than you normally would in, in tropical sailing. There's a saying that the, the the Arctic will kill the unprepared. And I've had that in the back of my head, planning for this trip and having gotten here, that the minute you let your guard down is when something's gonna happen. And that's why I'm continuously on edge and will be on edge until we get out of here. When we got here, it was like 18 to 20, gusting 23. Then it was like 23, 25, gusting 28. Then we saw 35 in the gust. The boat starts doing this, and I don't, I don't feel warm and fuzzy inside, so I can't relax when it's like that. Yeah. So we'll go find a, a safer place to be. And Hey everybody, wow, that was an amazing adventure. We had yeah. so much fun making uh, this series and we really tried to up our game to a new kind of like mini doco level. Yeah. Uh, we really hope that you had as much fun watching it as we did making it. <laughs> uh, episodes two, three, and four are available to be streamed right now. Yeah, so if you wanna see the crew leave the dock and sail on top of the world, you can stream them all right now at 80northseries.com. Yeah, we really tried to up our game with this one to like a whole new kind of mini doco level. And when we tried to publish it, we got blocked. Basically, uh, YouTube blocked us with yeah. a bunch of copyright issues and all the other streaming providers either weren't interested in it or they offered us what amounted to basically a pile of peanuts. Uh, so we decided to build our own website and our own streaming technology. Uh, so if you'd like to support small independent productions like ours, and see the rest of the series, episodes two, three, and four, which is just as awesome, if not more awesome than the first episode, yes. you can do it right now by heading over to 80northseries.com. We've got an interesting pay model there. It's called Pay What's Fair. Yep. Uh, so basically, whatever you think is fair for this uh, quality of video that you're about to watch, you can just put in that number and uh, that's what you pay. Cool. That's it. <laughs> Thanks very much. Bye. Bye. No amount of preparation could have our crew ready for the unpredictable weather of the Arctic. It's only been six hours since leaving the protected harbor, and the crew are already experiencing the unpredictable challenges that come with high latitude sailing. But their hard work will soon be rewarded by an up-close encounter with the locals. And a very memorable night with a carving glacier. Yee -hoo -hoo! 